Hello everyone. In this video we're going to look at another result from Archimedes' measurement of the circle. This proof that pi lies between 3 and 10 over 1 and 3 plus 10 over 7. I already actually did a video called Sandwiching Pi with Archimedes where I tried to explain the basic idea of Archimedes' method but specifically without requiring much geometrical knowledge. So in this video I'm going to try and present the same method but in a slightly more advanced and a slightly more historically accurate way. So the basic idea is to sandwich a circle in between two regular polygons, one inscribed in the circle and one circumscribed around it. And then the circumference of the circle, pi times its diameter, is going to be between the perimeters of those two polygons. Archimedes realized that by starting with hexagons and repeatedly doubling the number of sides, he could quickly get a pretty accurate approximation. And in fact, he stopped after four lots of doubling, so with two 96 sided polygons, and he found that pi lies between 25,344 over 8,069 and 29,376 over 9,347. And he then weakened that to his more memorable form formulation um, that it's between three and 10 over 71, 3 and 10 over 70. So Archimedes worked with rational approximations throughout, and actually the whole process is based on the fact that root 3 lies between 265 over 153 and 1351 over 780. So we're going to look at that result first. Archimedes doesn't explain how he got these approximations, but they are both terms in a series which has a reasonably simple geometrical background to it. Suppose we find a fraction, or in Greek terms it's going to be a ratio of lengths, AB to AO, which is just above root 3. Then we can easily find another ratio which is just below root 3, namely 3 times AO over AB. The product is Three. So if one's just above the square root, one is going to be just below it. And I've drawn that in green as PQ to OQ. And then we can construct the ratio of AB plus 3AO divided by AB plus AO by creating the parallelogram ABYQ here. If you like, in modern terms, we've added the vectors OB and OQ together. And the diameter of the parallelogram clearly lies in between the sides OB and OQ. So its slope is somewhere between those two ratios. So kind of intuitively, it seems like there's a reasonable chance that AB plus 3AO to AB plus AO might actually be a better approximation to root 3 than either of the two things that we've used so far. And in fact, we can prove that something like this is the case. If you calculate AB plus 3AO squared minus 3 lots of AB plus AO squared, it turns out to be minus 2 times AB squared minus 3AO squared. And this means that the ratio of the errors of each ratio squared from 3, so remember they're both meant to be close to root 3, so the squares of these ratios should be close to 3. The ratio of the errors simplifies down to minus 2 lots of AO squared divided by AB plus AO squared. And this is clearly below zero and is also above minus a half because AB is greater than AO. If you remember, AB is just a little bit over root 3 times AO, in fact. So this series of approximations does, in fact, get better and better. And when we repeat the process, what we get is a sequence which includes both of the approximations that Archimedes used, which is unlikely to be a coincidence, though the exact way that he derived the sequence isn't clear. You might, if you haven't seen this before, you might like to try adapting this method to get series of approximations to other things like square root of 2, square root of 5. Now let's go back to our image of a circle fitting inside a hexagon, and we'll see how Archimedes moved on from his starting approximations for root 3. So what we've done here is single out the diameter of the circle, M-O-N, and we're focusing on a vertical side of the hexagon 
so perpendicular to that diameter, and going 30 degrees in each direction measured from the centre. So we've got half an equilateral triangle here, OMA. In such a triangle, the ratio of OA to MA is 2, while the ratio of OM to MA is root 3 by Pythagoras' theorem. So we're going to use this approximation just over 265 to 153. Next, what we do is bisect the angle with the line OB. So then what you have is MB would be half the side length, not of a hexagon, but now of a dodecagon. So it's like doubling the number of sides of the polygon. Now, as you can find in Euclid's elements, we've got BA to BM is equal to OA to AM, famous result about angle bisectors. Archimedes then extends this slightly. MA to MB, it's like adding one, so OM plus OA to OM. And therefore, we can take the uh, alternate terms. We've got OM to MB is equal to OM plus OA to MA. And meanwhile, by Pythagoras' theorem, we can also express OB over MB in terms of OM over MB, which is what we just found an expression for. And these two principles are actually all we need to approximate the side lengths of polygons with more and more sides doubling each time in an iterative process. And what's neat is we can basically keep expressing them as ratios to 153. So OM to MB is the sum of the two ratios in the first line of the table, so it's just over 571 to 153. To extract uh, OB to MB, it's just extracting a square root um, just below 153 squared plus 571 squared. Take the square root of that. It's a boring operation without a calculator in Archimedes' day, but it was a pretty routine one. Um, Archimedes came up with it being just over 591 and an eighth to 153. And if we repeat this process again and again, we get OM to MC, just over 1162 and an eighth, 253, OC to MC, OM to MD, OD to MD, OM to ME, just over 4,673 and a half to 153. And at this point, we can stop. So ME, if we take stock of where we've reached, would be half of the side of a 96-sided polygon circumscribed around the circle. So think of half the perimeter of that polygon, it's going to be 96 times ME, and that's going to be more than the arc of the semicircle, which would be pi times, uh, times the radius. So pi is less than 96 divided by that ratio OM to ME, which we just found. Similarly, with the inscribed polygons, we start with MP being one side of that inscribed hexagon, and we're going to focus now on the diameter MN instead of the radius MO. So MPN is again half of an equilateral triangle, so MN to MP is 2, NP to MP is root 3, and this time we're going to use that being just below 1351 to 780. Again, we just keep drawing bisectors, so first we have NXQ where we put x on the segment MP and q on the circumference of the circle. Now, as we've seen already, NP plus MN to MP is equal to MN to MX. We use that with the outer polygon as well. But here, there's an extra little trick. If we look at the triangles MXQ and NMQ, we see that the angle at Q is shared and QMX is equal to QNP is equal to QNM. So these are two similar triangles by angle, angle, angle similarity. And therefore we have that, that MN to MX is also equal to MQ to MQ. If you know Ptolemy's theorem, theorem, then you could avoid some of that argumentation and just get it directly. Now, again, once we've got uh, that ratio, we can then express MN over MQ quite simply in terms of NQ over MQ using Pythagoras' theorem. And again, we use those two ideas as the basis 
of an iterative process. So we can get NQ to MQ is less than uh, 2, 9, 11 to 7, 80, the sum again. MN to MQ, we're going to need to extract a square root. It's just less than 3,013 and 3 quarters to 780. Once we bisect again, we get NR to MR, just a simple matter of adding. And here, Archimedes spots a reduction to smaller numbers, which is going to make life easier for him to extract square roots with slightly smaller numbers. So MN to MR is actually less than 1838 and 9 elevenths to 240. We've gone from expressing ratios to 780 to expressing them to 240. And here again, we can see he's actually chosen 9 elevenths, not because it's the most accurate fraction he could come up with, but because it's going to lead to a nice simplification in the next stage. When we look at NS to MS, this ratio to 240 reduces to the ratio 1007 to 66. And so we get MN to MS, NT to MT, MN to MT. And this is where we can stop this time. Think about it, the perimeter of an inscribed 96-sided polygon is going to be 96 lots of MT. And that has to be pi times uh, the diameter MN minus a bit because the polygon is inscribed, so its perimeter is less than the circumference. And so that's how we end up with our lower bound for pi as well. So I think the idea of Archimedes method, it's quite simple, but the actual geometrical way in which he found that algorithm that produces fairly speedy calculations because you can keep the denominator, if you like, fixed in each ratio, the second term in each ratio fixed, or you can fiddle things so that you can reduce and uh, make life more easy for yourself. That is a neat feature of it. Archimedes used this to produce an approximation of pi that was world leading and better than anyone needed at the time for any practical purpose. I think the thing that we discussed first is also interesting, seeing Archimedes using those rational approximations for root three, which still crop up in situations like solving the so-called Pell equation, x squared minus three y squared equals one. If you've enjoyed the video, do please share it with others. Check out other videos about ancient Greek mathematics on the channel. And thank you very much for watching.